So our next step um, in our exploration of uh, quantum decoherence is to look at uh, the most general interaction between your qubit and the environment. So we want to understand what is the effect of the environment on the qubit and what is the effect of the qubit on the environment. In, in this uh, interaction here, um, the states of the environment after the interaction are not necessarily normalized nor orthogonal to, to each other. It's just more convenient for, for, the, for calculations. So consider then um, a pure state of the qubit and some state of the environment. Um, so I'll be just looking at the generic state of the qubit of the form alpha 0 plus beta 1. And let's see how this kind of interaction affects the qubit and the environment. So we'll see that uh, under this kind of decoherence, this will evolve to alpha 0, e0, zero, 0 plus alpha 1, e0, zero, 1. Then I have terms with beta will be beta 0 e 1 0 plus beta 1 e 1 1. So that's kind of obvious. So, so the next interesting step is to rewrite this expression here in, uh, in such a form that we can give it some interpretation. So I'm going to rewrite this as follows. So the whole thing here is equal to, um, so let me just write it this way, alpha 0 plus beta 1. And uh, here I'll have a state E0, 0, 0 plus E1, 1 divided by 2. And I'll have alpha 0 minus beta 1. E0, 0, 0 minus E1, 1 divided by 2. So you can see I'm, I'm just uh, kind of rearranged uh, things or, or wrote, uh, took care of, of those two terms here. Alpha 0, E0, 0, 0 and beta 1, E1, 1. Um, so the sum of the two can be written in a slightly more complicated way, but this will, this will be useful for um, our subsequent interpretation. So now I'm just looking at uh, the terms, uh, this term here and this term here. So I'm going to write uh, those two terms as follows. I'll write them as uh, alpha 1 plus beta 0 and then I will have terms uh, E0 1 plus E1 0 divided by 2 and then I will have expression here E1 minus beta state 0 and here I'll have E0 1 minus E1 0 divided by 2. So that's that's another way of writing this part here. Um, now, the reason it is interesting is because now if you look at the state of the qubit corresponding to the relative states of the environment here, you can see that this one can simply be written as psi, so let's say identity psi, and let's write this state of the environment as E1. Then look at this state of, of the qubit. So that's like applying the Pauli operator Z. So it's a phase flip error that is applied to state Psi. So we can write this as Z Psi and some corresponding state of the environment, call it EZ. Of course it's Z and EZ for our American colleagues. If you look at this state um, of the qubit, then you can see that this is psi affected by the bit flip error, right? So you apply the Pauli x operator to, to your state uh, psi. So we can write this as x psi ex. And this one, as you can see, that's, uh, that's the result of uh, 
applying the Z operator and then X operator to state psi. So we can write this one as X, Z acting on psi. So first you just flip the sign and then you flip the bit values and call this EY. So as you can see that um, we can say that uh, environment is affecting the qubit but inducing um, two types of errors. Well, it, it depends really how you look at it. It can just do nothing to the qubit. It can induce face flip error, Z operator. It can induce bit flip error, X operator. It can induce both which is uh, x times z, so which is proportional to sigma y or y operator. And of course, you know, the qubit is also affecting the environment. The thing is, though, that um, the states, the relative states of the environment are not necessarily orthogonal or orthonormal here. So, so one has to be a little bit careful uh, when you say that uh, one of uh, the three things or four things can happen to the qubit. Nothing, uh, face flip error, bit flip error, or both. Simply because, you know, sometimes you may not be able to distinguish between, say, the uh, Z flip error or X flip error. The, the, if those two states of the environment are not orthogonal to each other, the environment doesn't know which one happened or doesn't know exactly w whether it was a bit flip error or, or the face flip error. But, but I think, you know, to a large extent, this interpretation of I have Z arrows, X arrows, uh, or nothing, or both, is, is, is just fine. Uh, because we can, as you'll see in a moment, we can always choose uh, a set of arrows which uh, uh, will be such that the states of the environment will be orthogonal to each other or form even orthonormal bases. But uh, the important thing is to realize that uh, the effect of the environment on the qubit can be understood in terms of bit flip errors and face flip errors. 